morning, everyone. Welcome to Conversations That Count. I am Sri Lekha Pale, and on behalf of Fairfax GOP, I am quite thrilled and honored to have our Lieutenant Governor of Virginia, Ms. Winsome Earl Sears. As you all know, Winsome is a mom and a proud Marine. She is the first female Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia and the first Black female elected to statewide office. Welcome, Winsome. Hello, hello, Sri, and hello to all of your listeners as well. <laughs> we are so, so honored. Winsome, you're a household name now, not only in this great state of Commonwealth of Virginia, but the entire country. I have a lot of friends throughout the country, and you really have made, the, made a mark in the entire country. You, of course, have inspired many immigrant and minority women like me, but you're also respected and adored by men and women in general. So while these achievements are history making, you are very super focused on getting to work than receiving praises. And you made us as Virginians focus, not just Republicans and Democrats, you just made us to be very focused on issues. So Vincent, my question to you is, how has your life changed after you became Lieutenant Governor of Virginia? Uh, well, you know, it didn't really change very much from the campaign. It, it just felt like a, a continuation of the campaign. It was now I'd won. And so we now know that we definitely have to get to work. And that's what we did. I mean, I kept going around Virginia talking with groups. I kept going around Virginia listening. And, and now what kind of legislation did the, the folks want to see proposed? Now that we, it was a done deal and I was going to get the job and thank you all very much, by the way, and we would start in January and we had to make sure that we started right away, uh, ready to go. And that's what we did. We, you know, I understand that I made history and all that, but that's one day after that, how do you govern? Because, you know, campaigning is one thing and governing is totally another. So now we had to learn how are we going to compromise and what would that compromise look like and what were we going to fight for? There's no compromise on this particular thing, you know, and uh, how, how do we engage enough uh, Democrats so that we can get the things that we want through? Not what we want, but the things that we campaigned on, that we made promises on. And uh, so that's kind of much what it was. That's how my life changed, but it, you know, it was pretty much more of the same. And I knew what I was getting into because I've done it 20 years ago and I just knew it was gonna be on a bigger scale. <laughs> When some you articulated it so very well, uh, campaigning is one thing, governing is a whole different thing. It's just an extension, but really a whole different thing. I was, uh, um, I saw you on Legislative Day last month, Vincent, and just seeing you hop from place to place and meeting to meeting, advocating for the policies that you believe in and educating folks about the administrative initiatives was a, is a learning experience for me. So how are you keeping yourself so charged up and how do you prioritize what needs to be done or what are the focuses for the day, the week? How do you do that? Well, when I have a set schedule, um, but first of all, I drink my green juice and I make that myself because you have to have the energy to keep going because your day starts so early here, seven o'clock in the morning. Sometimes some people it's 630 and then, you know, you go until 10, 11 o'clock at night, then you have to wake up and do it all over again, day in. There's that uh, noise there. But um, so you, you have to make sure that you eat properly. So I drink my green juice. And then, of course, for me, it's prayer. I don't know how other people do it, but I have, I have to have my prayer time. But then I look at my schedule uh, when it comes to the legislative session. And I see what bills are coming through, what bills might be problematic, what bills possibly I might have an opportunity to take a tie vote on. And I look through those and, and then I, I go and I talk with certain senators if we're trying to get a particular bill through, like we were trying to get charter schools through. And uh, you have to go and, and you, have to, you have to beg for it. You know, uh, you have to see if you can get somebody from the other side to cross over so that we can get things through. Like we got 
lab schools through uh, to female senators, as it turns out, who are Democrats, they themselves went to lab school. So they understood, you know, it was a little bit different how they uh, went through, but it was a lab school nonetheless. And they understood how well lab schools help our children to perform. So, uh, and so, so you know, we got some wins and some wins we didn't, but you know, you live to fight another day. Absolutely. When some of uh, the viewers are so very engaged in our Facebook lives, I would like to tell them that if they, if they would like to answer, ask any questions to you, I will request them to post it and I'll do my best to kind of get to each one of those questions with the time that we have. So Vincent, you just briefly spoke about charter schools. I mean, charter schools, in my view, I'm a mom, Fairfax County mom. It's a, pr a pro-parent and pro-student issue. So should the bill to give Virginia more power to approve these charter schools, should it, will it have to wait at this point? Or what, what is going to be the next step? Right. So as, as we know, we just went through an election. So we now have Republicans, we now have a Republican governor, a Republican Lieutenant Governor. Uh, we have a Republican uh, Attorney General and we have a Republican House. So if you're counting, that's four. And of course the Democrats uh, the, uh, in the Senate control the Senate. So the Senate Democrats, so if you're saying we have four fifths and they have one fifth, well, uh, you still have to try to figure out how to get certain bills through. And some things that they were willing, the Senate Democrats were willing to budge on and some things they weren't. And one of those things, unfortunately, was charter schools. We got them to budge on, on the uh, lab schools, but not the charter schools. And even though charter schools are public schools, even though uh, North Carolina, they have 180, even though in Maryland, I believe, which is totally Democrat controlled, they have about 140 charter schools and Washington DC for goodness sakes is con totally controlled also by the Democratic party. And they uh, have, I think it's 120 charter schools. In Virginia, we only have eight, mm -hmm. we only have eight. And we campaigned on that and we were trying to get it through, but we couldn't get anyone to budge. But I tell you what will happen is if parents and other concerned citizens call your legislators, call your senators, call your delegates and tell them, we want charter schools, write letters to them and let them know these are our children, we want charter schools. There are ways to fight. I can fight, but it also helps if we have the parents, the, 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 the concerned citizens who come out and fight as well. And the, I tell you what, um, there's a saying in politics and it's that politicians may, name, may not be able to read, but they can do math, they can count. And they know if they get a hundred people who want it, they can suddenly figure, you know what? We may start voting for this. So it's always we the people, your government of the people, by the people, for the people. I am looking at the people. You are the people. You got to get involved. When some uh, several parents are listening to this, in fact, uh, I've had uh, messages even before you came in saying that a oh, wow, Winsome is coming. So I know that parents are listening to it. I'm sure your message is resonating to them. And I promise they'll get active. And I myself as a mom will get mu much more active on this issue. So Vincent, while we are on the topic, can you also briefly discuss progress made in the 2022 General Assembly session? Right. So we're looking at uh, if we're talking about promises made and promises we're trying to keep, um, because as, as we said, you're campaigning on certain issues, but if you don't have the votes, then you can't get it through no matter what you try to do. And one of them, of course, was the charter schools. As we said, we did get the uh, education piece for lab schools on. We had to tone that down a little bit to try to get it through again. These are the concessions you make as you're trying to get legislation passed. And one of the things, by the way, as uh, citizens, we have to remember is that you may not get the whole pie your first try. So you don't throw everything out and say, well, if I can't get everything that I don't even know, you take what you can get. And then the next legis legislative cycle, you come back 
and you try to get a little bit more and a little bit more. That's how we work it. So this time around, uh, we got, um, when it comes to education, you saw that the governor signed a, a, a directive, executive order, that we're not gonna deal with uh, teaching CRT. We can't afford to, we don't have time for it. We're not gonna also do discrimination, you understand. And in fact, as you know, the judge in, uh, in Northern Virginia said it was discrimination when we limited the number of Asian children that can attend Thomas Jefferson. We say we don't wanna deal with uh, people based on their race, but that's in fact what we were doing. We knew that to be true. We're not gonna teach uh, CRT. Uh, we're gonna teach all of history, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're gonna teach about slavery. We're gonna teach about Jim Crow laws and miscegenation laws. We're gonna teach about redlining. We're gonna teach all that. But there is a way to teach so that uh, we come away with uh, the, the, uh, a way of, of how we can learn to live and love each other as opposed to what CRT was doing, which was creating uh, low morale and, and the children were uh, wondering uh, the, their self-worth, you know, and, and pitting one race against another against another and no learning is happening. So we're, we got rid of that. Then we said we were gonna have higher pay for teachers, higher pay for law enforcement. Um, and then some of the things we were gonna do monetarily, but as you already know, the budget has not gone through because we're kind of a mile apart. You know, there are certain people who want to spend $500 million on a particular issue and other people only want to spend $300 million and give the other 200 back to the taxpayers who first gave it to us, right? We, we, so, so there are problems. So we still don't have a budget and we're trying to work that through. Don't ask me when that will happen because that's totally out of my, out of my uh, field. That's uh, the governor is gonna call us back as soon as we can get some consensus so that we can get to work on that. Then we talked about, we're not going to um, defund the police, another one. Thank you, thank you. Our police and we're gonna protect qualified immunity for them. And there's so many other things, you know, uh, that we were trying to do to keep us safe. We're trying to get rid of regulations that unnecessarily hinder business, especially we're trying to get, as you know, the gas tax. We're trying to delay that. You see, we talked about that way before, yeah. before anything happened so that we could get some reprieve. And now look at the price of gas. We okay. talked about getting veterans, in, uh, in fact, the first $40,000 of their retirement, we wanted to make sure that that was kept safe so that veterans would stay here with all of their knowledge, with all of their leadership skills, pulling down contra contractor, defense contractor jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Unfortunately, uh, we're, we're not anywhere where we need to be because that's part of the budget as well. So there's a lot that's tied to the budget that we can't get through, but you know, we'll see. Vensam, you're working very hard on behalf of all of this. And these are actually some of the questions that our viewers also have. But there are oh. like two questions that I would love to, uh, to ask you. One of our viewer, Missy Pratt is asking, what is one thing you recommend every Virginian do to turn the tide towards conservative values in our commonwealth? Well, I, we have to get involved. We have to get, if you leave the political space, then you know, there's that old saying, nature abhors a vacuum. And so we get what we get then, and we wonder, well, how did we get here? Because you were not involved. You were not involved because you didn't contact your legislators to tell them what you want. You didn't uh, get involved because maybe you didn't give even $5 or whatever. And if you couldn't do that, you didn't get involved by maybe knocking on doors or even putting a bumper sticker or maybe a yard sign or calling someone and saying, hey, I know this candidate. I want you to vote for this candidate. You know, you have to get involved some way or other because we have been given a government that we can choose, we can choose. And so when you have that, 
blessing, then you have no one to blame but yourselves if we get a government that is not of the people, by the people, and for the people. You see what's happening in Ukraine. You see what's happening in all these other countries. We are the people who are responsible, and we have to get involved. And that's just, you have to get behind a candidate. And by the way, getting involved also means you become the candidate. You decide that, you know what? I'm just as good as anybody else. I have a lot to offer. I have a heart to care and I can offer myself. It's going to be a sacrifice. Anything worth knowing involves sacrifice. Being a parent involves sacrifice. The jobs that you have, you're getting paid, but sometimes it is a sacrifice to do that. So get involved, including up to the point of offering yourself as the candidate. Winsome, I think to get involved should be our motto for 2023 elections. I can tell you that. I think this should be an inspiration for all of the listeners. And while we are talking about community engagement, Winsome, myself and several ethnic minority group members within Fairfax GOP, we have reached out to several, several immigrant and minority communica- communities, and we are creating these coalitions to co- uh, to speak to Hispanic Americans, to speak to Ethiopian Americans, to speak to Nigerian Americans. So we have one of our uh, good member called Noel, who is also part of our coalition, that's kind of asking, saying that, what can administration help us out with? Uh, is there anyone we can connect with in the administration so we can talk about this and a great coalition that we are building so we can partner with them and do uh, something not only in Fairfax County, but also be uh, do every, uh, do in Commonwealth. Uh, what can we do? Well, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, if, if, for example, you want to ensure that your businesses are um, get the opportunities that they need, then I would say make sure you talk with the Office of Diversity and Opportunity. I would say, make sure you talk with uh, DPOR, the Department of uh, Professional Occupational Regulation. Make sure you talk with the the Secretary of Commerce and Trade. Make sure you make those appointments and you come together. Uh, Maybe it would be, if you have a board, then, you know, maybe the president, the vice president, you know, uh, the executive committee, or if not, a group of you call and say, we would like to sit down and have a discussion with you about the issues that we are concerned about. That's it. You ensure that your voice is heard in the squares that you want to be uh, um, a part of. So it just depends on what you're trying to do. You make sure you contact that particular uh, Secretary of the Commonwealth, of Secretary of Trade, Secretary of maybe Veterans Affairs, you know, and by the way, don't limit it just to uh, the state level, go on the federal level, talk with them as well, call your congressman. And I tell you, politicians understand the power of numbers. So it would be wonderful if at least 10 people came, at least it's wonderful. So Vincent, we are a group of about 20 people that are Indian Americans, Pakistani Americans, Ethiopians, again, Vietnamese, Filipinos, Korean Americans, Hispanic Americans. So we are forming this great coalition on behalf of Fairfax GOP. But as you suggested, we will reach out to Secretary of Commonwealth, Secretary of Trade, and uh, all of those people and make those connections for sure. Look, go to the governor's website and look at that organizational chart that lists the different secretariats. And whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish, you go to that secretary. You know, I have done things like, and this was before I was in anything, I just feel like people are answerable to me, you know, as a regular citizen. I elected you, and even if I didn't elect you, you're in office now, you're supposed to represent me. And so I would just go sit in an office and say, I want to talk to so-and-so. Well, they're not here now. Well, when do you think they'll be here? You know, you, you, you just have to do that. 
Absolutely. Persuasion is the way to go. Vincent, I mean, I want to kind of divert the topic a little bit to COVID protocols. I mean, the administration has done a fantastic job of not mandating anything. But what about workplace? I mean, that's coming from one of our uh, viewer again. What about removing workplace regulations of COVID? That seems to, I mean, the mandates are continuing to happen in workplaces. I mean, is there anything Youngkin administration and yourself are talking about it? Well, you know, on the federal level, um, he, uh, the, the president has kept that in place. And so because of that, uh, we can't really mandate for, um, for businesses. You know, we have to leave the businesses to make that decision for themselves, how they want to go about that. But what we can, what we are trying to establish is now we're going to have studies to see if this, if we have any more pandemics come through this type of sickness come through, how do we best approach it? And one of the things that we are doing is to take away the power of the governor to just wholesale make uh, these decisions about what's right for us and what's not right and et cetera, et cetera. You know, so many people lost their businesses because the previous governor made the decision on which businesses were essential and which ones weren't. He, he for example, shut down the mom and pop stores, but kept the big box stores open in those very same industries that the mom and pop stores would have been in. And so, um, you know, I, I've heard of people who actually committed suicide because they lost the family business or they lost the business that they had begun, et cetera. Um, so, so we're working on that. Uh, you know, we lifted it where we could which was in the schools and you see how they fought us on that until uh, somehow some science, I don't know what science, but uh, they said suddenly we didn't need masks anymore. By the way, they also said that the bandanas don't, don't, work. Work. don't work anymore. All of a don't sudden. Work. And the double layer cloth masks that they still approve of, 20% effective, 20% effective. Yeah. So who were they fooling? So yeah, yeah, we, we, we're working on what we can do to help businesses. Yeah, thank you, Vincent, for kind of advocating for all of us. Now, I want to move on to these administration positions. As you know, Steve Knotts is the chairman of Fairfax GOP. He's ecstatic that you're on the show. He's very thankful on behalf of Fairfax GOP that you still remember us and you're so engaged with us. His question is, there are so many positions in the current administration if from agency's perspective. I think the last time I saw education agency had three positions, health agency, I'm a healthcare professional myself. So I, I was interested in some of those agency positions. There are multiple positions. What I know people have put in their resume. What is the best way to reach out to them and say, hey, we applied for it. What is the, the feedback from them? How do we go by navigating that? Uh, well, I tell you, I don't have uh, anything to do with those positions. They're wholly in the governor's uh, realm. They're, he's the one who would be filling those administrative positions. I only have four positions and one of them is me. <laughs> yeah. And I don't have a huge budget at all. Uh, so um, what, what I would say is just continually ping whoever you know it is, what, whatever department that you have applied for and just take the initiative. Just like in any other job that you're trying to get, uh, take the initiative and call that uh, secretariat and say, you know, if it's in healthcare, you call um, the department, uh, the, the secretariat of health, et cetera, et cetera, and, and say, I applied for a position and I just want to know if there's anything that I can add that, that, um, to my resume, or do you have any questions? You know, it could be that there might have been a glitch in the system when you sent it, but you didn't know and they don't know. Maybe they never got it. So I would say take the initiative. Just do what you would normally do. I think, Vincent, you hit the nail on the head. I think it's like getting the involved is the best thing, taking the initiative. And if you're really interested in that, stand up and just call the agency. Call the agency that is leading that and just say, hey, I just applied. What do I do next? I think being proactive, just kind of getting involved and engaged is the best way to go. 
Uh, Vincent Fairfax County, as you know, is the, is the biggest county in Virginia. We have uh, in 2023, 52 delegate positions, 52 positions that are going to be coming up. Uh, I, I, again, I don't want to misquote, 52 races, I'm sorry, not 52 delegates in 2023. So as we are heading into 2023 elections and for people that are thinking about running, do you have any message for them? Or do you also think any issues of importance? I think education will continue to be an issue of importance, but what else do you think they should be thinking about while they're heading into 2023? Well, what I would say is start now. If you're thinking of running, don't wait until next year. Start now. Get the voters to get to know you. And especially because you have so many doors to knock on, start now. Get your literature now. Start thinking about the issues uh, and where would you, where, where, you're going to find it in the news. You're going to call your friends and say, what's important to you? You're going to talk to somebody, maybe you meet at the grocery store. You know, I'm thinking of running for office. What's important to you? Uh, you talk to, you know, uh, whoever. What's important to you? And I would say, narrow it down to five. Make sure you, you at least can talk very well about three. Very well. And if you can, develop an acronym that will help you. For example, uh, I narrowed my issues down to three because I saw what was happening and, and, and you know, after I did my homework and it was C, safety, economy, education, D. And I just had various lists in my head, what goes under safety, of course. So the communities wanna be safe. People wanna be safe in their homes. They want personal safety, which is why we weren't going to defund the police, et cetera. They wanted their businesses safe, you know, the smash and grab, et cetera. Economy, it's always the economy, stupid. Job creation, how are you going to help that? How are you going, and of course that fits in with education, the other E. People want their children to have a good education so that they can have marketable skills so that they can compete globally. It's that simple. Well, how do we get there? So that's what I mean. Start now. Don't wait. Don't wait to see who else will jump in. If you, think you are the candidate, then be that candidate. I'm sorry. Can you see me there? Yes, I yeah. can. Yes. Yeah. So and I think those are good tips, uh, for Vincent. I think you, you're right. Start early and jump in, right? Right. Uh, I mean, it's like you can't hold back. If not you, who else is going to do it? So thank you for motivating us. Don't be a stealth candidate. For goodness, yeah. if you have good ideas, get out there. Get out. All, what can happen except people will say no. So Vincent, you have been in the office just for three months and you already have made so much progress. The questions I had about uh, not only teacher pay, about veterans uh, community, about uh, defunding the police and about schools policies, you covered it all. I mean, uh, two other questions I have in the best interest of time, I know you have to run and you have a lot going on. Any transportation priorities for administration that I should be, we should be aware of? Well, you see, all of this is tied up in the budget. Um, okay. And, you know, when it comes to the, the, the issue about building roads, when it comes to the issue of maintaining the roads that we currently have, how much is going to go down into the localities, how much the localities can charge, the grocery tax, uh, when it comes to um, the, 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 the taxes that uh, you're paying for the maintenance of the roads on, um, uh, what am I thinking of? Ah, uh, my mind just drew a blank. The tolls, the <laughs> tolls. Yeah. <laughs> I must be suffering from trauma because of the tolls, you know, but um, there, there's so much uh, when it comes to everything that we're, we're trying to negotiate, it's all in the budget. And I've got to tell you, you know, something else that was part of the budget that nobody caught until we did, First Amendment rights were in the budget. And we didn't really know that until we started look at looking at some of the amendments. It's amazing what people can sneak into the budget, but we pulled that out, got rid of it, we killed it. So there's a lot that's in the budget, but there are laws that have passed already dealing with help for agriculture. 
uh, dealing with those who, for example, in agriculture who want to grow hemp, you know, not necessarily marijuana, but hemp. The marijuana bill came through again, and this time they were trying to figure out how people could sell it. But I don't know if you saw, I'm, I'm trying to find, the, the, the bill came through, it was about this big, just to give you an idea. And it landed uh, five minutes before we were supposed to vote on it. And it was like this big, this, this big. Nobody knew what was in it. And you can't pass laws like that, so it died. Um, so that's just, just a lot that came through. Now, one interesting bill, if I can tell you about that, as it turns out, you know, we do want children to help to take care of their parents, right? So that it relieves the state. And who is the state? Us, we the people, from having to take care of a parent that a child should be able to do. But it turns out that some children were fighting against each other and forcing other children in, in the same family to do more and they weren't doing anything. And so we had to have a bill come through that says, unfortunately, you can't force children to take care of their parents just because of some of the things that were happening. So it's, it's very interesting. And then we had some people who were wrongfully convicted and we paid millions, millions of dollars. So this is why we've got to get it right. We've got to know who we're hiring. Yeah. Thank Lord, we have a great attorney general partnering with you. So uh, Vincent, uh, this is Women's History Month. You are an inspiration to all of us. Would love to hear from you what the Women's History Month means to you. And of course, other than your mom and grandmom, which I know you look up to them quite a bit, I would love to know any other women that you, that you feel inspired by. Well, you know, Maggie Thatcher inspires me greatly. Uh, uh, you know, I love stories about women who came from nothing, you know, and just with perseverance against all odds and, and men, women, I, I just love to find those kinds of people so that I know if they can do it, I can do it too, you know, and, and that's, that's the whole story about me that I came from nothing and here I am. And if I can do it, you can do it. And that's what I inspire these, the little girls. I take my, my pen off and I, I let them touch it. And I say, you can be Lieutenant Governor too. It's available to you. I want you to stay in school and I want you to study. I didn't do anything exceptional to get here. Just prepare yourself. And you do that by staying in school and studying. Winsome, thank you so much for joining us tonight. The entire Fairfax GOP community has been excited about this session more than ever. In spite of your busy schedule, you chose to come in, engage us, give us such great tips for the potential candidates and talk about the issues of what is going on in General Assembly. We thank you for your support, but Winsome, please count on us to support you in your future endeavors. God bless you, your family, Commonwealth, and the great country that gave so much to you and to all of us in this wonderful world. Thank you I for want to thank you all for supporting me. I could never have gotten here without your support. You believed in me. And you, yes, you questioned me to make sure I was the right candidate. And that's what you're supposed to do. And I thank you so very much for it. Take care, Vincent, and have a wonderful evening. You take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.